Although Montag is a relatively new company, they made quite some advances over the short period they are around. The first thing we saw from them was the Montag X3, a case that might be budget as hell, but it is an all-rounder package, completely stuffed with very much usable fans without making you pay for a premium. And as a license extra, it came with a Molex centipede, giving me the same feeling like looking at this image. The next thing was Montex Air 210, which had RGB and that was about it. No, I didn't particularly enjoy working with it, it was too loud, it couldn't cool enough, it just wasn't very good. Then we saw Montex Sky 1 and the Sky 1 Lite, exceptionally good cases for the price. Great airflow, kinda expensive features, but good build quality all in a package that was very very affordable. And then came the Sky 2 and if you haven't seen the video about it, go watch it after this one cause I love this damn thing. Anyway, with each case release, Montec upped their sales each and every time and they became better and better and better. And now meet Montec's newest Metal D24 Premium, hopefully following the same pattern as their cases do. The D24 line exists in two different versions, a regular one and a premium one, which is also the topic of today's video. However, let's not kid ourselves here. It's the same freaking cooler. The only difference is that the premium has an all-black heatsink and comes with a Montec logo ARGB plate on top. Other than that, it's exactly the same thing and Montec made this very easy for us to confirm because for both coolers they stayed a 8553.23 centimeters cube heatsink surface area. So yeah, it's the same freaking thing and they will perform exactly the same. Compatibility wise, this thing can be slapped on top of an LGA 17, 1200 and every 1150 for Team Intel. And from AMD we have AM5 and AM4 support so everything still relevant is covered. However, as far as installation procedure is concerned, there we will find the first thing that Montec did really really well about this thing. These plates. Inside the box we will find the cooler with the fans already positioned but not attached, a bag of fan clips to do exactly that, installation hardware for AMD and Intel, some thermal paste, a low noise adapter and four of those extremely rigid plates two back plates to cover every Intel platform and two mounting brackets, one for AMD and one for Intel. And let me tell you, those things are a pleasure to work with while installing this cooler. When going for an Intel CPU, we first need to take the provided back plate, either LDA 1150 and 1200 or the 1700 one. From there we can take those little spacers here meant for your exact socket and shove them onto each screw and then position the whole thing behind your motherboard. On the the other side, place the bigger spacers on top, put the Intel mounting bracket on top and screw it down using the nuts. Over on AMD side, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, put the little AMD spacers on top of them and then screw them down using the double end screws. Then take the AMD retention bracket, place it on top and mount it down using the nuts. And just make sure that you use the bag meant for your socket. Every socket has its own set of spacers. Use the right ones. Even AM4 and AM5 have different models. Anyway, the point I'm trying to, to bring across is this is stiff. This is hella stiff. From this point on, nothing will move. And I really do love the fact that we don't get two separate brackets for either top bottom or like left right. This feels just so much more secure. And I do appreciate that. From there, no matter the platform, place some thermal paste on there, take the fans out of the heatsink and screw that sucker down. And in case you got a premium version, you can or you should remove the top plate by slightly pulling it up. And from there it's just a shove-in system. But before you reposition the fans in there, a little tip from my side. The top plate comes with ARGB, of course it does, everything needs RGB nowadays. This means that there will also be a cable. And not doing anything will lead to an incredibly hideous cable stretching through half of your case. However, if the top plate is still removed and the fan is not installed yet, we can actually nicely hide the cable in that little indentation of the heatsink. And then once you put the fan on top, 
it can fall out and it's hidden and the cable comes out where the fan cables do and this is this is really really nice now let's talk a bit about the cooler itself ignoring the top plate the metal d24 measures 133.5 millimeters in length 121.4 millimeters in width and 153 in height and that's not really a lot if you think about it sure if you add the top plate you get things to about 158 millimeters in height and it will also get a millimeter bigger on each side but that's still not a lot for a dual tower heatsink. It's kind of in between a NHD15 and a D12L. In the bottom of the cooler we have six copper nickel plated heat pipes going through a relatively big nickel plated base and considering the size that's actually quite a lot of heat pipes for the sink. That being said, the size does create a problem in my eyes. The fans on here are Montec's own metal 120 fans. Very interesting fans and we have a video just about them which you can watch after this one but to give you some numbers it's a 9050 RPM fan pushing 69 CFM at 2.82 mm of H2O. But the fan is not really the problem, the shape of the heatsink is. By spec you would have one fan in the center and one on the right side. However, because the heatsink is not designed to lean over to the back, the right fan will just sit straight above your RAM. And here comes the marketing point, which I believe Montag should just not have said at all. Perfect compatibility with memory, Metal D24 Premium perfectly works with most RAM on the market and it will not block tall RAM thanks to the intricate cut on the cooling fins. And what they are referring to as the cut of the cooling fins is this line here, which is true. But what good does that line do if the fan is sitting right next to it? So by default we are looking at like max 33mm RAM. Things like G-Skill Aegis. Things without a heatsink or RGB on top. And, and don't b me, that's not most RAM on the market, that's solely budget friendly market. Anything remotely performance or aesthetic related will be higher. Now before you declare my ass insane, on most coolers like for example on NHD15 we would all just slightly push the right fan up and theoretically you could do this on here too. The problem however is that aluminum top plate. For most coolers doing this would mean that you just lose a bit of performance because the top part of the fan isn't really doing anything anymore. On here however it's not doing anything plus you now have a five millimeter thick piece of plastic in the way of your fan which will just create sound annoying sound so for montec next time shift the whole heatsink to the left from the base like by 25 millimeters and once you are there there will be no ram clearance issues at all and users won't have to decide between 33 millimeter high ram or annoying sound or if you already have the situation you are looking for a solution just install the fan on the back side. Might look a bit odd, but does the job too. Okay, with all of that said, let's get to the benchmark. Letting both Montec Metal 120 fans spin at max speed created a quite odd result. At 55.8 degrees C above ambient under 130 watts load, the Montec Metal DT24 did not seem to be on the upper side of the spectrum. Sure, it managed to outperform a Noctia NHC14S, but compared to other dual fan coolers, well, uh, ugh. Darkrock Pro 4, Freezer 50, D12, X2, Glacier RGB, all of them significantly outperformed the new Monte Cooler. However, then we were turning down the fan speed, and then we noticed this extremely straight line. In fact, the most upper point is 100% fan speed, and the point at which the line makes the first curve is 50% fan speed. This means that in our specific case, the metal cooler had absolutely zero change between 100% and 50% fan speed. And a line looking like this is absolutely not typical for an air cooler. Usually, this type of behavior can only be seen for extremely overpowered water coolers where the fans are just there for the looks. But in this case, it's an air cooler. And what we can gather from this straight line is that 130 watts are simply not enough to fully utilize whatever that cooler has to offer. However, I do have a slight issue with the cooler. Although we can clearly see that there is more to squeeze out above a certain power level and we are working on a new set to, to test that, it's just it will take a couple of months to be ready. However, my issue with, is with the overall noise level of the fan. Similarly to 
what I said in the metal fan review, those things are kinda a bit loud when spinning slow. In fact, they never fully reach noise floor. And in this case, because of that, even when letting the fan spin slower and slower and slower, you have to go to the very end of the slider until the D24s merge with the other dual tower coolers. So do we recommend or do we not recommend? It's complicated because of this. If this line would have had a band like the hydrogen, I would have said hell no, the fans are just too loud, max performance is too low, not a good idea. However, this indicates that the line could be getting a band once the load gets higher. And at that point other coolers may start falling down significantly, giving the metal D24 the upper hand. But as for now, as unfortunate as it is, I will have to leave it at I don't know. For CPUs that are pushing less than 130 watts, no. This is too overkill and it will not be silent enough to make any sense. And for loads above 130 watts, I'm assuming that it will be better than most other dual tower coolers on our list. I just don't want to make any statements without having tried all of them. But rest assured that as soon as the new test setup with higher wattage will be ready, this puppy will be revisited. As far as things that I can definitely say for now, the whole thing is high quality as hell, we love the mounting system and its rigidness, there is no difference between a premium and a base version except for the ARGB plate and the heatsink color and for 57 or 69 dollars MSRP price tag it's keeping up a relatively good price to performance ratio. But okay, this should be it for today about the Metal D24. At this point a huge thank you to Montek for sending it over and I hope that we will be able to revisit this puppy as soon as possible. Until then, have a look at our take on the Montek Sky 1 Lite. Lite in this case is just a keyword, nothing about this thing is, is light. On a side note, we also have channel memberships and if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to make a new offering to our Lord and Savior Cthulhu, because he too loves metal. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.